Hi guys, I hope you are good. My name is Brisa Lovilagazi and thank you so much for taking your precious time to join me. The name of the channel is called His Royal Tennis. What we do, we offer entertainment uh, related news and we also um, review some of your favorite reality shows. Guys, I'm recording this video at night. I've been recording, 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 deleting, recording because I mean, I've been making a lot of mistakes English wise. English, my English, I think it starts from 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. after that. It's gone out of the window. It's to sustain me during work hours where, I'm, where I work in corporate. After that, I'm tired. I, I just speak my home language. Okay? So, but because there are people that I have to accommodate in this video, I have to speak English. Guys, um, let's get to business, all right? Let's talk about the latest episode of Unfollowed, which featured South African digital content creator and... Um, Influencer, Michale Damase. Guys, uh, this episode was very interesting because most people are like, what was Michale doing on the show? Was she cancelled? You know, um, I probably also had the same question at first. I was like, hey, why Michale is on the show? But now I want you to look at this from a, a production perspective. And then we're going to proceed as to uh, on the things that transpired on the show. Okay. Um, I think they brought Michale and Damase to create engagement and they got that. Um, they wanted us to speak and we are speaking and people are still speaking till right now people are speaking about that Michelle episode. The fact that we are questioning whether she is cancelled or not cancelled, that's what they wanted. I feel like that was one of their objectives. And also guys, another issue that I've had with the guests that we've had on the show, um, most of those people, uh, people who were famous like in 2003, 2004 or in the 90s, but you find that the generation that has been born right now they do not know who Nontle Tema is. Um, I had, I've had uh, some interactions with some, you know, youngsters. They're like, okay, who is Nontle Tema? So you see, uh, probably they wanted to bring someone who um, is young on the show, who can appeal to that demographic. But at the same time, people saw that attempt of cancelling Umichali when people were signing a petition. It's something very recent. It's something fresh and relatable. So people will be like, oh, okay. Okay, so... Uh, you know, but we're gonna, you know, go deep as to whether Michali is cancelled or not cancelled. Okay, um, guys, let us talk about something. I feel like we are people are criticizing Michali for coming on the show. Like, oh, Michali did a grievous mistake uh, for coming on the show. This is gonna be bad for a brand. I don't think this is gonna be bad for a brand. In fact, it's gonna be good for a brand. Michali has been in in the digital space. You know, all these girls. You know, they are thriving in the digital space on YouTube, on Instagram. But one thing that few people get to achieve is going on mainstream television. You know, so this was one of Michali's few opportunities uh, of uh, that we've seen here on on mainstream media. Of course, which since it was. A rare opportunity she should have utilized it to her best or uh, to her yo she should have utilized this opportunity <laughs> to to the best of her ability yes michali damase prepared for the interview but she was not prepared for the interview she can tell from her answers that she was prepared you know that if i get if i'm asked this i'm gonna respond like this but she was not prepared for what Tembe Murototo had installed for her. Because Tembe Murototo is, is good at what he does. And if you're not ready, you will collapse. The only person who I felt was ready for him was Fetjo. Fetjo was ready for Tembe. But the others, they were take a take a ring. No, 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 no. They were take a take a ring. Okay. So um, one thing I noted about this interview is... Um, Michali is, is guys a professional, you know, we take away guys, the scandals and all these things, but you, you know, when, when Tim would ask her about content creation, you can tell that this person is definitely knowledgeable about her craft. She's knowledgeable about content creation, about her niche. There's a lot that we can learn from, from her. Unfortunately, the show was not about that. This is not a show about branding. It's a show about, um, cancel culture. It's a show about getting into the debt you know, um, into deep things. All right. Excuse me, guys. I, 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 okay. I have another problem also with us as viewers of the show. I feel like we are sort of hypocrites at, to some extent. All right. There are certain things that, especially when it comes to morality, right? People are crucifying this Michelle in Damasa for dating Leroy Sitambe, whereas some of the people watching the show, some of us 
I'm I'm using us because if we are all there are certain things that we do as people that are not on cameras that will never be on cameras because no one's gonna speak about us we are not famous but because it's michelle in damaso we feel uh, some sort of entitlement to crucify her yes of course she is in the public in the public eye and she even said it herself that you know what if you're in the public eye you owe it to you owe you you people are sort of entitled to to your life but i feel like when you judge someone so harsh whereas you know it's just because you are not famous but you also sort of do the same thing and also when it comes to these things of morality we place women at a higher standard compared to men if leroy was on the show probably some of the questions he was not gonna be asked to some of the questions but because it's a woman she's expected to have and she's expected to have answers but also um, nonetheless i noticed that michael and damas i'm saying this i'm saying she prepared but she was not prepared when they asked her some questions you can tell that she was just you know um running away from them for the for the fact that for, for firstly what you know the fact that um she's married to a divorced and not to to a man who's not divorced a man who's still married legally she's saying that yeah no but he's in a process of divorcing and all of that and 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 um you know temp is asking her a very valid question that most men do say that you know uh that you know i'm, I'm in a process of getting married i mean of getting divorced and i don't know and i would have i would have wanted someone to also ask a question that had it been you who is on mary jane's shoes how would you have felt about the whole situation that would have been a nice question um but at the same time guys um yeah uh we cannot entirely blame michelle for that whole thing guys like uh, it takes two to ten more but mostly a man is responsible because he came out of his marriage and went to Michali. And I'm not saying that she's not accountable on her off of of for her contribution on her. because there is a part that she has also played. Because when a man who's married comes to you, you have a choice to say no, you are married. Even if you are still in the process of divorcing, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Another thing Michali is being asked about uh, Leroy uh, with allegations that he he mistreated his wife that's a, a red flag and it looks like it's something probably that bothers her but because she's michelle in damas so she would not accept that now um, this interview guys another thing i noted michelle was very defensive like she came across very defensive their answers were not genuine you know i would have i think this interview i i love michelle but i think she was not relatable because she did not speak from here she was speaking from here and viewers are not fools we can tell when you're speaking from here and here yet which there's nothing wrong but then you should strike a balance between um you know speaking and be rational at the same time um being vulnerable you know um so that is very important when you're having an interview still be intellectual but also speak from the heart so you could tell that it's so hard for us to really relate to her because her, her answers were very um yeah they were very rehearsed not like rehearsed in a way but they were very philosophical yeah it's philosophical the right word yeah but they were very like that you know um for example when she was asked about musa kaula she was like who's that you know yeah no like you know who M M musa kaula is you know and a part of me feels like i don't know this is just my personal opinion i have a feeling that probably yes musa started in a bad way with michali but at the same time i do feel that at some point there was some collaboration between musa kaula and michali damase i do feel like even some things do feel like they are PR constructed in that relationship that relationship dynamic that they have with musa you know i don't know guys um yes okay i have a feeling you know this interview um you know what i will give michali the way answers that she was really good at i think i've said it also that especially when she's asked about um her work you can tell that she's knowledgeable about her work the way there were many good takeaways from this interview but the bad thing i noted is i'm not sure if maybe michali had put on this mask and she was trying so hard to be strong and a little bit bitchy but um i'm thinking that there were some undertones of arrogance from her mid from this interview you could tell that she doesn't care you know um she really doesn't care you know yeah 
But there's something also that she said that it's so hard to dispute. She said that in South Africa, we don't really have cancel culture. Um, I'm of the view that maybe she said that there's no, basically she was saying there's no culture of accountability in South Africa because some people have committed certain crimes and they still come back on our television screens. But I'm still of the view that maybe um, it, in alignment with what she said, I think in cancel culture it does exist, but there's double standards, right? Some, you know, people, for example, if you are a man, you have chances of coming back on television, whereas if it's a woman, you know, there are people like Vatiswa and the Vatiswa, where is Vatiswa? You know, there are people that we, as it's so hard for some people to redeem themselves once they come back, once they come back, or even if, if they even make it, even if they make it, you know, to, or if there are prospects of them to come back, but mostly the industry favors men, you know. Yeah, guys, um, I don't know, but what did you think overall of this interview? I love how she, she knows her craft. I love how she conducted herself, but I would have liked her to be more honest, vulnerable, and genuine, you know. Um, yeah, those are some notes I, I made from this interview. But guys, let's stop, um, you know, this thing of uh, double standards, especially when it comes to morality and married people and, and uh, all of that. Let's stop having double standards. But guys, what did you think about what do you think about this interview? Do certainly share your thoughts in the comment section below. I love you so much and may you continue to stay blessed. Salute.